Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Rennick. It is Friday, September 21st, beautiful day here in Longbow Key. Welcome to Insurance Time with Mike and Mike. With me is the agent owner of MIC Insurance out here on the island, Michael Mallier. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Michael. How are you today? Excellent. So I appreciate you investing your time. I know you have a busy schedule. Today, we thought we'd talk about Umbrella insurance. Umbrella insurance. And you're going to educate me. I'm not going to talk. Very so, good. So go ahead. Uh, umbrella liability <laughs> is, uh, I think, historically perceived as a product for people with wealth to protect. Uh, and I would say that an umbrella policy is certainly a necessity for clients who have assets that are not uh, protected against suit. So your homestead at home is protected. Mm -hmm. uh, many qualified funds, uh, tax qualified funds, uh, historically have protection from suit. Uh, but other assets, uh, if I'm in an accident that exceeds my auto limits, um, either they come after the rest of my stuff or I have insurance to protect against that. And that is an umbrella policy. Umbrella policies are sold on the primary side in increments of one to five million um, then in blocks of five million above for high value clients. Uh, but I also want to talk about the implications of an umbrella policy for everyone in the sense that an umbrella policy done correctly includes $1 million of uninsured motorist coverage. Now I beat this uh, band uh, or this drum in the past uh, with our uh, uh, podcasts, but we live in a state <clears throat> where according to the state of Florida, 65% of drivers have less than $25,000 of coverage if they injure me. Correct. We've talked about that. <clears throat> so indeed, that exposes me to a life uh, disability without income. Mm -hmm. Now, when you and I were young and employed, uh, we were offered long-term disability. Cor that's true. I remember okay. those days. Okay. <laughs> I had to uh, think for a minute, uh, Mike, that, you're that, right. Uh, <laughs> that, that covered us in case we were hurt and could never work again. Now, those days of long-term disability due to repetitive motion injuries, uh, AIDS, a uh, number of reasons, uh, uh, those disability policies have really gone away uh, uh, for uh, certainly self-employed people and people in uh, jobs where uh, they don't have enough employees in the business to offer such a benefit. Okay. So for me, uninsured motorist coverage on my car policy and on my umbrella policy are protecting me in case I have that party with low or no insurance who hits me at an intersection and I can't work. It also covers the passengers in my car. So indeed my uninsured motorist extends uh, I want as much uninsured motorist coverage as I can buy. And the state of Florida is an unusual one uh, in the sense that the that level of, of drivers having that low of a level of coverage is unusual in the United States. So whatever state you're coming from, your risk of this was substantially lower. And now that you're an operator in the state, great state of Florida, uh, you have a risk that should be protected. So this is unique to our area. This is different. And we, you know, there's, we meet more people that are from other areas than we do from Florida. Right. So this is an important point. Let me step back for just a second. So the umbrella policy from a liability perspective, though, would, it coordinates our cars, our toys, such as a boat or jet skis. Um, All underlying owned exposures that are personal. So, so cars, boats, cycles. Instead uh, of buying certain liability coverages with each of those insurance well, policies? Well, we still have to have the underlying required limit, okay. which requires us to carry at least a, a 250, 500, 100 would be a common required limit on auto, which is 250,000 of bodily injury per person, 500,000 bodily injury per accident, and 100,000 of property damage on homes, boats, cycles, 300,000 is the required underlying limit for the majority of, of umbrella insurers. So indeed. So this would kick in after those amounts. After those insured. amounts are, 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 are uh, correct. So and what it does. Used up, you have the umbrella that sits above it as an umbrella of coverage. Okay. Uh, 
to pay for those additional incremental 1 million uh, pieces of liability coverage above. So instead of paying for this on each asset for coverage, you pay for it in your umbrella. Well, right? you really pay both ways. And I think the major point here to be made is that there is a risk, even if I do not have assets that are exposed, I have the exposure of the injuries I cause. Okay. So if I am in an accident where I strike a 30 year old party who makes $70,000 a year currently, I'm potentially on the hook for up to three, three and a half million dollars in income loss okay. to that party. Okay. My auto policy clearly is not going to pay that. Right. Now, if I even have a $1 million umbrella, I have a, a possibility of settling this lawsuit saying, I don't have all of the money for your damages, but we'll give you $1.25 million. Okay. Please settle. Okay. Uh, an umbrella policy is a vehicle of stress relief. When I get the letter for the big lawsuit, it goes on to my attorney because included is unlimited legal defense until the claim is settled. So the insurance company steps in Correct. at that point. Correct. It's all their attorneys on the hook. So, so go ahead. Well, an umbrella policy really provides dual duty. It provides liability coverage for any party I might hurt. And it also covers my family, my own personal exposures if I'm hurt by an uninsured motorist, which today uh, I perceive to be the bigger risk for responsible customers. So bottom line though, this supports my premise I've had all along that insurance is a complex topic. Well, it is. It's different in Florida. And, we're, we're not the same as everywhere else. And you need an agent that understands the nuances, that's fully prepared, and studies this kind of stuff, an agent such as yourself, right, Mike? I think that's right. Now, folks that have more questions, what's your office phone number? 941-554-8909. Mike, I want to thank you for sharing these thoughts and um, thoughts in the past and Happy thoughts in Friday. the future. Same to you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.